Here in Germany, this election is, of course, about who's going to win, but it's also about who's leaving. Angela Merkel became Chancellor in 2005. 16 years on, her time as leader is almost complete. She's involved in the campaign, but she's not a contender. And the new Chancellor will inevitably impact Germany's positions on a range of vital issues, from the direction of the EU, to global trade, to climate change. My colleague Katja Adler puts it this way. The thing is, about these German elections is they matter not just inside the country, but outside as well. This is all about change. You thought German politics might be predictable and boring? Absolutely not. Well, let's start with the main players. And first of all, the man Angela Merkel would like to be her replacement. This is Armin Laschet. He's already leader of Angela Merkel's Christian Democratic Union, the CDU. It's right of centre. Its sister party in Bavaria is called the CSU. Mr Laschet had been favourite, but it's not going to plan. His polling was already wobbling when this happened. As Germany's president addressed the devastating floods in July, Mr Laschet was seen laughing that his leader of one of the worst hit regions made it worse. But there's more to his problems than just that, though. Deutsche Welle tells us in this profile, throughout his campaign, he's come across as vague. What many wondered, does the candidate really stand for? Well, in the latest TV debate, Mr. Laschet tried to address that. The cohesion of Europe in these difficult times, a climate neutral industry and strong economy, and above all, a clear cause for national security. That's the pitch, but the polls are offering little comfort. Look at what's happened. First of all, this is the result of the 2017 election. The CDU, CSU, sometimes called the Union, reached 35%. That was actually its worst result in 70 years, but it was still top. Then here's polling from July of this year. The CSU, CDU are on 29%. Now look at the latest polling. Well, Mr Lachette and the CDU has been on the slide. And remarkably, having been third in July, the SPD, the Social Democrats, now find themselves in the lead. And the SPD's leader is this man, Olaf Scholz. He's the current finance minister. That's because Germany's government at the moment is a grand coalition between the two main parties. One German political scientist says of him, he's rational, stable, almost boring. This makes him very similar to Mrs Merkel. That's right, in their different ways, both candidates want voters to see them as bringing more of what Merkel offered. Indeed, Mr Schultz seems very happy to encourage this comparison. In this magazine photo, he even deployed Merkel's trademark diamond hand position. Now, let's be clear, they are of course not one and the same. Mr Schultz is centre-left, Mrs Merkel is centre-right. They're different politicians from different parties, and this is Olaf Scholz's pitch. I will immediately bring in a minimum wage of 12 euros, ensure stable pensions, and ensure that within the first year of government, we will have the structure in place to build a renewable energy industry with good jobs that are climate neutral. Now, Mr. Schultz and Mr. Lachette are most likely to replace Angela Merkel, but there is one other candidate who has a chance. This is Annalena Baerbock. She's leader of the Green Party, and this is her message. I stand for a new start that would no longer do climate protection halfway. Policies that finally bring children and families to the centre and a human rights-led foreign policy in the heart of Europe. Now, after briefly leading the polls, the Greens are now back in third. And here's the polling from last week again. We've talked about the CDU, CSU and the Social Democrats and the Greens. But also note the far right AFD, the far left Die Linke and Liberal Conservatives, the FDP. Now, no one's going to work with the AFD, but all of the others matter because German governments are always coalitions. This is how the system works. Are you ready? OK, here we go. Germans cast two votes, one for a local MP, one for a political party. At least 598 members are elected by these two votes. Then half of the Bundestag is made up of those local MPs. Half are elected from party lists, based on the percentage of the overall vote that the parties received. Then the Bundestag is set and coalition talks begin. Coalitions have all sorts of funny names in Germany. Traffic lights, Jamaica, Kiwi. 
they all refer to the different colours of the different parties. And eventually a coalition will emerge that has over 50% of MPs. It's that coalition that chooses the Chancellor. Now, that process can take a while. Last time it took five months. But when the coalition is settled, we will then see Germany's approach to the EU, to climate change, to global trade. Joe Biden acknowledged this global role when bidding farewell to Angela Merkel. Thank you for speaking out for what is right and for never failing to defend human dignity. And I want to thank you for your continued support for the long-standing goal of Europe whole, free and at peace. It is the nature of all elections that foreign policy takes a back seat. But behind the urgency of domestic politics, a great unresolved question remains. What kind of global power does Germany want to be? That's why Germany's next step matters for all of us.